it's, it's pretty interesting to hear, uh, you know, the, the users that we've heard from now, Walmart, massive company, TD Bank, 10,000 technologists, 4,000 applications. They've already trained 1,500 of their developers on how to approach the cloud. Uh, but, you know, OpenStack is not just for massive, massive organizations. You know, that's sometimes something that, that people ask. Digital Film Tree, you know, that's a, a, a smaller, innovative company that's changing things up in, uh, in the film and TV industry. Um, and our next user is, uh, is another organization that is not some massive company, but uh, they have a really interesting use case. Uh, they were possibly the first OpenStack implementation outside of Rackspace and NASA. It's, a, it's a, an organization based in Alberta, um, you know, just across the Canadian Rocky Mountains here, that has been using OpenStack since the very, very beginning. And they've been very involved in the community uh, and have had uh, a lot of big contributions to code, to docs, to the ops communities. And so, um, you know, being that we're, we're here in Canada, we wanted to, uh, to bring them over and have them tell us a little bit more about their organization and about what they do. So from Cybera, please help me welcome Robin Windsor, President and CEO. Canada is a very, very big country. The history of Canada started with conflict, and certainly there is some still today, but the size of the nation-building task quickly required cooperation. French and English, First Nations and Europeans, countless immigrants from all around the globe, because community is where the good stuff gets built. To make a nation, you build the infrastructure. In the 19th century, that meant railroads. It's how you move your goods from where they're produced to where they're consumed. In the 20th century, we built the highways, a vast land needing to be paved. When we see them all today, think about what it took to build all that. And later in the 20th century, who else other than an airline with a flag on the tail is going to fly to places like Tuktiaktuk, where there's no money to be made in that particular leg. But if you're going to call it a nation, your infrastructure has to reach to all parts of your country. In the 21st century, we think we all know, certainly this group does, that the key infrastructure we're now building is the fiber optic networks. We have to have that capacity to move our goods from where they're produced to where they're consumed. And we've seen some great demos of that this morning. Lots of experts have been telling governments, and they're now getting the message, that they have to regard the internet as basic infrastructure, just as basic as roads, waste, and water. But what good are railways without locomotives? What good are highways without vehicles? And what good are networks without sensors and computers? At Cybera, as a not-for-profit member of the research and education community, with deep roots in academic networking and computing, we see a world where everyone has access to affordable, useful networking and has compute available on demand as readily as they can access the power grid today. Computing is still wastefully inefficient, and that means poorer access to a vital resource. Steve Jobs described a computer as a bicycle for the mind. Well, we need more bicycles. The cost of computing, if you look at it, is the cost of the hardware, plus the software, plus the networks, the power, and the carbon cost of the power. Let's not forget that one, plus the people. And at Cybera, we're working to improve access to the networks. We're working to improve how we share the hardware and software, and in the process, reduce our power draw. And we're working to develop computational thinking in Canadians from kindergarten all the way past grad school. We have to get this as part of our mindset. So why are we doing this? Uh, my fellow Siberians are all Albertans. Um, we need to diversify our economy. Alberta has hundreds of years of oil and gas reserves, so no worries, right? Well, the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stone. There are some threats. Um, being from Alberta, however, we do have the best beef in the world. We all have to eat, right? No worries there. Um, 
well, with 3D printing and synthetic biology, a hungry world is finding new ways to be fed. I'm not sure that I want to eat this steak, or if I can even afford it, but it's coming. We see technology racing forward, massive volumes. Um, we've heard from Tim at CERN before about the massive volumes there. Um, we're seeing amazing volumes coming from things like the Square Kilometer Array that got uh, kicked off from the University of Calgary, and now is a, a 3 billion euro build uh, involving countries from around the world. These are exciting times, and as Siberians, we couldn't be more excited. This is fun stuff. Joe and Everett, one current Siberian and one former Siberian, co-authored the OpenStack Operations Guide. We had the privilege of working with Chris Kemp and his team on the Nebula project, from which we all learned a lot. Thank you, Chris. Um, Siberia was the first organization outside of the founders to run OpenStack in production, running both Swift and Nova. Indeed, we were the first out of the gate after NASA to put Nova in production, and that was a world first for a service provider, albeit we're pretty small. And being first out of the gate isn't something we do just for bragging rights, though who doesn't like to brag, but it means that Siberia had a chance to influence the roadmap and the technical direction. So what did we do with it? With our federal partners, Canary, we set up cloud resources to help entrepreneurs across Canada. With our rapid access cloud, we're helping researchers, not just in Alberta, but around the world, shortening the distance from campus to commerce. And when the biggest disaster in our province hit, a multi-billion dollar flood, we were able to spin up resources and offer to help people whose uh, uh, computer rooms had all flooded. Why do they put computer rooms in the basement? I don't know. Um, get them back up as fast as possible. Amazing flexibility. We face big challenges as we explore new technologies, but we don't have to go it alone. We work together from across Canada, around the world, just as those early, early pioneers did when building this huge country. Because we know the community is where the good stuff gets built, and we're proud to be part of this community. Thanks. Thanks, Robin.